Hey guys, so Turkey's defense industry in recent years has provided clients with an entire line of new products by continuing to develop new weapon systems. Turkey's successful development of its defense industry continued even during the coronavirus pandemic, where defense projects stayed on track. But currently, Turkey's bestseller is the Bakhtar TB2 drone that was developed and produced by Turkish company Bekar, owned by two brothers. The small company was founded in 1984 during the rule of Justice and Development Party and transformed into a real weapons giant. It is owned by the Bayraktar family. One family member, Selkuk Bayraktar, is the company's CTO and the son-in-law of Turkey's president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Bayraktar is the most successful export product of Turkey's defense industry and an object of pride for President Erdogan. According to its own data, the company has increased its export of products sevenfold from 2006 to 2021. Now, according to the media, 16 countries ordered this attack drone. The countries include Ukraine, Azerbaijan, Morocco, Tunis, Qatar, Kyrgyzstan, and Turkmenistan. Poland announced last year they were buying 24 drones, becoming the first NATO country, other than Turkey, to obtain the weapon. The Bayraktar TB2 has been shown off well in combat, and it is said that the drone has more than a combined 420,000 flight hours. But its real success and world praise comes from its successful use against Russian occupant vehicles in Ukraine. Even recently, many analysts and experts doubted that the small amount of Ukrainian Bayraktar TB2s could survive the beginning of the war in wide-scale combat conditions. They expected most of the drones to be simply des destroyed by Russian ground troops, and for the remaining ones to be destroyed soon after takeoff. They didn't expect the successes seen in Syria, Libya, and Nagorno-Karabakh to be repeated. All the previous times with successful use of the Bayraktar TB2 were explained by experts as a lack of complex AA systems involved in the regions, as well as the low intensity of those conflicts. But when the internet was flooded with videos of alive and healthy Bayraktar TB2s in the sky over Ukraine, destroying tanks, armored transports, SAM systems, gas tankers, and AA and EW systems, it became clear that these experts' expectations were wrong. So the Bayraktar TB2 is 21.3 feet long and has a wingspan of 39 feet. It can stay in the sky for over 24 hours and can reach speeds of about 137 miles per hour. Now the UAV's frame is made of composite materials and it is equipped with an automatic takeoff and landing system. When necessary, the drone can operate in a semi-autopilot mode without being controlled from land. The UAV has the Canadian Rotax 912 internal combustion engine with rotor propulsion and 100 horsepower. The UAV has anti-EW defenses and an autonomous navigation system that doesn't depend on GPS. And thanks to the high-quality optical electric system, that is used by the Canadian CMX-15D Westcam Air Recon Station, Bayraktar drones can hit targets from altitudes of 4.3 miles outside the range of many old or low-altitude SAM systems. Its armament can include two guided anti-tank UMTAs missiles with laser targeting and a launch range of 0.3 to 5 miles, or four guided planned highly accurate Bozok and Rakistan air bombs capable of hitting non-moving and moving targets up to five miles away. And especially importantly, this drone is cheaper than similar products from competitors. An exact price is unknown, but it's between $1.5 and $3 million per unit. But the Baycar developers didn't stop to rest on their laurels. They are continuing to work on a line of drones, their next product was the substantially heavier Bayraktar Akinci. Now, Bayraktar Akinci means light cavalry flag bearer in Turkish. 
So this drone is already in Turkey's armed forces and should enter the international market. The Bayraktar Arkinsi is similar in size to the American Scout Attack MQ-9 Reaper drone, but it is superior in maximum takeoff weight. Considering that it uses Ukrainian engines to fly, it makes sense that Ukraine will be one of the buyers. So the choice of the Akinsi for the Ukrainian Air Force seems extremely logical and realistic. Considering they already have the Bayraktar TB2 and a corresponding stockpile of highly accurate weapons that can be installed on the Akinsi. Now compared to the Bayraktar TB2, the heavy Akinsi has more capabilities and completes more missions. This includes having a maximum takeoff weight of 13,000 pounds, compared to the TB2's 1,550 pounds, and a max cargo of 3,300 pounds to 330 pounds. In 2021, the drone equipped with a Ukrainian AI-450 engine with 450 horsepower set an altitude record for Turkish UAVs at 5,229.7 feet and it flew 4,464.6 miles. Moreover, the Akinsi can use the well-known, small, targeted MAMC and MAML bombs, in addition to full-sized ammunition, like the targeted 2,200 pounds Mark 83 bombs and air-to-air -air missiles, which let it attack air targets, as well as winged SOM missiles to attack ground, stationary, and moving targets at a range of about 124 miles. Now, during testing, the Akinsi reached an altitude of 30,144 feet while carrying a 3,000-pound bomb. Its onboard equipment is also significantly different. This includes the electric optical targeting system, as well as a newer radar that lets it detect ground targets independent of cloud level at ranges in the hundreds of miles. Another important factor is that the Akinsi's base version setup can operate independent of satellite control channels that the Bayraktar TB2 has in separate modifications. Removing the dependence on ground communication stations with an active range of 186 miles brings this drone's resilience to enemy EW to a new level. Considering the fairly large size of the drone with a wingspan of 65 feet and a length of 39 feet, as well as the two propeller engines, the Akinsi will be significantly more noticeable in any case on radar compared to the Bayraktar TB2. However, we must understand that the heavy drone's maximum altitude is 7.5 miles. Even at maximum cargo, it can go almost 5.6 miles high and the variant with the 750 horsepower MC500 engine from Ukraine's MotorSeek can go even higher. Flying at 7.5 miles high makes the Turkish Akinsi unreachable for an entire line of SAM systems. And we aren't talking about systems like the Strela 10 or OSA with attack radii of 2.2 or 3.1 miles of altitude that were destroyed in bulk during the nagorno karabakh roar by the Bayraktar TB2. But about the Turek that can shoot down targets 6.2 miles high. The Panzer C1 has a declared range of 9.3 miles, but its ability to destroy aerial targets in general have fallen under doubt after real combat. For example, the total loss of Russian Panzer C1S SAM systems in Syria and Libya is at least 23 units. Most of them were destroyed by Bayraktar TB2s with a maximum altitude of 5 miles. Meanwhile, Turkey's defense industry considers the Pantsir S1 as a typical target for the Akinsi that is armed with the highly accurate, targeted MAMT bomb with an operational area of over 18.6 miles. Considering the range of the Russian SAM system is only up to 12.4 miles, this lets it be destroyed without additional risk. However, a certain threat is presented by the Russian C-300 and Buk SAM systems. But first, the targeting range of the SOM winged missiles at 124 miles allows the drone to not enter the system's area of responsibility, like with the MAMT and the Panzer C-1. 
Second, combat experience in the Nagorno-Karabakh war has shown that destroyed AA systems at this level is complex and often involves radio-electronic warfare combined with search and destroy devices. For example, the Armenian C-300 system was destroyed thanks to the combined capabilities of the Bayraktar TB-2 that determined the target's coordinates, while the SAM's radar was suppressed by EW stations, probably Coral by Azazlan. Thanks to this complex approach, enemy AA actions from the side of Azerbaijan, the only real combat launch by the C-300 in its 45-year history, ended fairly unconvincingly. In any case, destroying AA defenses is easier to do using a combat drone because it lets you risk steel instead of a pilot's life. Another important factor for the Ukrainian use of the Akinsi is Turkey's active position in joint projects. Considering the fulfillment of local production of the Baykar drones in Ukraine, it would make sense to equip this heavy drone with Ukrainian systems that could increase the drone's capabilities or replace the Turkish ones. Additionally, the capabilities of the Akinsi let it be armed with a suspended OMA EW protection from radionics that lets it suppress radar systems of SAM systems and fighters as well as create interference for active and semi-active navigation warheads. Unfortunately, Ukrainian soldiers do not currently have the Akinsi. Nevertheless, they are successfully combating their invaders on land, water, and air. Well, that's all for today. Leave a like if you believe in Ukraine's victory, and let me know if you learned something new in the comments, and uh, we'll see you again next time.